from Palo Alto, California, it's theCUBE, covering VMware Women Transforming Technology 2019. Brought to you by VMware. Hi, Lisa Martin on the ground at VMware in Palo Alto, California at the fourth annual Women Transforming Technology event, or WT Squared. One of my absolute favorite events to cover, and I'm pleased to welcome from one of the sponsors, Jennifer Cohen, the Vice President of Operations at Toyota Research Institute. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, Lisa, I'm really excited to be here too. This is such a great event. It's, yes. it's morning time, you and I both have a lot of energy coming from, even before you walk into the keynote Absolutely. here, the collaboration, the positive spirit, the energy, all of these women talking about, and men as well, past experiences. It's, you walk in and the energy of WT Squared is palpable. This is, is your fourth year, so you've been here now at all four. I have, and that's why I keep coming back, because the energy here is so good, and because every year I walk away with tips I can use at work and in my personal life uh, championing diversity. And diversity inclusion, one of the, the tracks yeah. here, as well as tracks like helping emerging yeah. um, leadership, Absolutely. the younger generation, yeah. which is key because the attrition rates in technology are so, so high. Tell me a little bit about uh, Tech Toyota Research Institute, Tierra, yeah. what you guys do, and, and what made it important for TRI to sponsor WT Squared this sure. year. So Toyota Research Institute is a subsidiary of Toyota. We're working on really exciting things like autonomous driving, uh, robotics to help elders age in place, and material sciences. So it's really exciting, uh, next level stuff, and it, it's uh, thrilling to kind of come in to work every day uh, on things that we've been hearing about in the real, and now they're real world things, not just the Jetsons, you know? Yes, yeah. and so you were here, uh, as I mentioned, the last three years, but yeah. last year, uh, when you were here, you were saying a minute ago, Go. You leave this event every year with really useful kind of we'll, we'll put it into you know tech terms yeah. actionable insights. Absolutely. Tell us about your conversations at TRI that where they said yes, this is an important event for us to sponsor. Absolutely. So at T when I. When I came back last year, I had brought a couple folks from TRI to attend the event because I've been attending since the beginning. And as I said, every year I find something that I can bring back to the teams, if not multiple things. And we, you know, our chief diversity officer, or excuse me, our chief of staff, who's also our diversity and inclusion uh, head, she uh, was very passionate about also supporting this event. We're involved with Grace Hopper. We have a women's employee resource group. Uh, we're, we're really putting our effort and our time here. And they were uh, glad to sponsor. And what was so exciting to walk into that room full of energy today and to see TRI's logo up there, was amazing. And I'm sure that for the, you mentioned that there's about 12 of your, yes. your folks that yes. are here that probably feels great that you're not just, it's not just a logo. No. This isn't just branding, this is actual. We're here. You're here, it's a focused, concerted it effort is. that TRI has. And in fact, when you joined TRI uh, in the last couple of years, yes. one of the things that inspired you was there's a chain of female leadership here, is. which is not common. No, it's definitely not uh, definitely not common in my career. And so one of the reasons I started at TRI was because of my manager, who's, uh, her name is Kelly Kay. She's our EVP and CFO, and she's an amazing leader. And so in having the opportunity to go to another company, I wanted to go to one that makes a difference, like TRI, look, working to improve the quality of human life. And I wanted to work for somebody that I really respect and could learn from. And it's been pretty rare in my career to have women, female mm -hmm. leaders to report to. So it's been amazing. And that I think shows in the role that I have, the role that our chief of staff has, Kelly's role, and the fact that we're here today. It all flows through. So talk, let's talk a bit more about flow. As the VP of operations, yeah. tell me, like for example, last year's WT Squared, yeah. what were some of the learnings that you brought back yeah. and used in your team, whether it's your management style or even yeah. hiring the next generation? Yeah. So a, a few things um, that I've learned, and not all of them are from last year, I'll be honest, and not all of them are ones that I've just applied uh, at TRI, but some of them are things about management. Uh, Patty Vargas was here a couple years ago talking about wins and challenges and really highlighting wins in every team meeting. That's something that I took back, and while it's not necessarily diversity, it's been transformational for me as a leader and really helpful to my teams. Then some of the other things I learned were about, uh, and especially a few years ago, about saying to HR, I'm not accepting any candidates until you have a diverse candidate pool. That's made a really big difference, and it's hard to say, and it's hard to stick with, because it is hard to find women in technology. However, sticking with that has really helped in my career hiring folks to have a more diverse team. So sticking with it, you've been in, the, in technology for a long time. Yes. Tell me a little bit about your career path. Were you STEM from the time you were a kid, I knowing I love computer science, or was it more zigzaggy? A little zigzaggy. I was actually a history major, uh, 
Okay. So, uh, but I always loved technology. Uh, back when we had TRS 80s, uh, I loved technology. And so I actually started doing that to put myself through school. And I loved it so much, it's what I've stuck with. So I've been in technology for 25 years, uh, starting as help desk and systems administrator and moving my way up in my career uh, over time. And every so often they still let me touch something technology and, and, <laughs> and configure a firewall or something like that so I can uh, keep a little bit of that skill set. But it is core to who I am and it's core to why I made it 25 years. So. That's a milestone. Congratulations, yeah, by the way. 25 years in any industry, the techn technology industry, I was reading some reports the other day, upwards of 45% yeah. attrition, which is higher than any other industry. Yeah. What had been some of the secrets to your, per obviously I'm imagining persistence, but yeah. 25 years is a long yeah. time to stick with anything, but you clearly have a passion yeah. for this, but I'm sure it hasn't been easy. Give us a little bit of an understanding and maybe some of those more challenging times you yeah. encountered and yeah. how did you just kind of, with that internal resolve, say, no, I'm, I like technology, this is what I want to yeah. do. So, you know, it's always tough being the only woman in a room that's happened the bulk of my career, although thankfully not at TRI, uh, but it has happened across. And I actually was the only woman at one company, and I thought it was going to be a great opportunity, and I loved the technology that they were doing, and I was excited to do infrastructure and operations and support it, and it was really a bad experience. And uh, it wasn't, I imagine, purposeful, but it was not great. And I was there a very short period of time when I realized it wasn't going to work. And I had to take a real hard look, do I want to keep doing this for a living? And I do, I don't want to give up technology, so the right thing was to give up that company, right? And the right thing was to, to make sure that I stayed in what I loved, but not in the wrong spot. And so I think being stubborn and persistent, and not being willing to give up the stuff that I love, because the environment wasn't right, was a huge part of why I've made it this far. And my daughter is a computer science major, and so I really want for her not to have to go through those things. So part of the reason I come here today, why I'm excited about WT2, is I want to make sure that she has a far easier time of it than I had going up. So was your daughter always interested, or did she, is she kind of following yeah. in mom's footsteps? She wasn't in the beginning, actually. She didn't want anything to do with it. And my mom's a CPA, and I didn't want to do anything with finance, uh, we right? Like we don't want to be kids, right? mom. No, maybe a cool aunt or uncle, but never the parents. Exactly, but as she, um, took coding classes, she actually did Girls Who Code, uh, the seven week immersion camp, she found, like me, that she loves it. So I think she'd like to not compare it to mom, because she doesn't want to be her mom. Of course, But of course. she absolutely has that same passion. She abs she loves to code and see the output and see the changes it can make uh, in her life and, and potentially others. So. so is she an undergrad currently? She is. Does she, she is. give you any feedback on the, the diversity in, in her yeah, classes? she does, and I wish I could give you something inspiring, but unfortunately, uh, she it's four, four girls to 40 guys. Okay, so, so maybe she science. has that, maybe it's a yeah. DNA thing where she has that <laughs> Um, some people might say stubborn is bad, yeah. however, I think you're a great example of how that can be, uh, you know, sort of flip that coin and look at it as persistence. Yeah. What keeps her saying, I don't care that I'm yeah. four of 40? I'm, I'm not sure. I think, it's, I think it's similarly the same thing that it's um, something that she's passionate about. And also she's and had, they've, everybody's been lovely to her. She's had no mistreatment. So she's definitely loving it, but does notice that she's one of, you know, four out of 40, so. But would you, would you advise and I, I don't like to say the next generation, yeah. like your daughter's generation, yeah. but it's it's the generation of us women who are in yeah. technology now yeah. with the attrition rates. If they're in a situation, how would you advise them to recognize like yeah. the experience that you shared yeah. with us? That this is situational. This is industry-wide. I'm not yeah. going to make a generalization. What would your advice be to them in terms of making that decision to not not leave? So I would say, actually, a mentor of mine told me uh, when I was years ago at a company, he says, do you like the work or do you, do you not like the work? Do you like the people? Do you not like the people? If you don't like the people, you need to go somewhere else. But if you, like the if you don't like the work, you're in the wrong industry. And I like the work and I always have. So I would say if you like the work, find the right opportunity and see what change you can do in the company that you're at. If you're at a company and things aren't right, a lot of times you need to talk to man your manager, HR, there's ways to see if you can fix it. And if you can't, it's okay to go somewhere else and do what you love. I love that, it, it is okay. So one of the things that I'd love to dig in on as well is you had gone to TRA's HR and said, I'm not gonna be looking at any candidates until you, uh, I that actually did TRA? that, for, uh, for actually company. previous companies, but I, that is my stance since then. So, I'm not gonna look at any have, candidates without a diverse pool. Okay, and so what does diverse mean to you? What do you say to them, I know you can find this. Yes, I, well, I, I diverse. I don't. I don't want to dictate it. I just don't want to have a, you know the teams all be the same person. And I think Joy is talking at the keynote right now about how important it is that we be careful of bias and that we look at those things and that we are uh, having the people who build the technology be well-rounded because this technology that's built here in the valley goes all over the world and has to serve everyone, not just the folks who build it. So I think it's having that same mindset going into it and going into hiring. 
one of the, and that's so important. And there's also debate of, is it a pipeline problem? I just read um, Emily Chang's book, um, Grotopia. Yes. And, and where she kind of documents where that pipeline problem was right. created yes. many, many, many right. decades ago. And a, a lot of people will say, it's a pipeline problem. But the majority, the, the underrepresented, which isn't just women, it's yeah. people of minorities Absolutely. as well, who say, it's not a pipeline problem. The, this, and, and even if we look at AI, yeah. there's so many exciting possibilities. All the autonomous yeah. vehicle work yeah. that TRI is doing, for example, that will impact everybody in the right. future. It's facial recognition. Yeah. And you know, there's probably people in the baby boomer um, generation yeah. that have iPhones with facial recognition. Yeah. But the, the things that Joy was sharing yes. about the biases that are, these models are being trained yeah. on, Really, it gives me goosebumps. It's yeah. mind blowing. It but is. more people need to understand yeah. we need better data and more diverse data. Right. Not just that, to train the models to recognize right. more. Agreed. But there needs to be lots of different uh, data sets. Yeah. So, this inclusiveness, yeah. when I think of diversity and inclusion, one right. of the things that I thought of when Joy was talking about inclusivity is it's inclusivity of different data sets, of it different is. technologies, Absolutely. so that ultimately yeah. going forward we can start reducing these biases right. and this technology that yeah. is all for good. And I think um, one of the things that we've done is, you know, for our company, we actually had an, uh, an all hands doing a conscious bias training. Like we are absolutely committed to making sure that we're thinking about those things. On the idea if it's pipeline or if it's, um, or, or, or if it's not, I think it's a combination because the fact is my daughter is in a class with four, four girls of, and 40 men. And that's not necessarily, you know, I'm not, there's no judgment there, but that's the reality. So there's pipeline, but I also think we can demand as hiring managers to have a diverse pool come to us. And diversity isn't just I speak to women because that's what I, you know that's my story. But there's not there's you know we, there's other kinds of diversity and inclusion. You know we have our LGB, LGBTQ plus ERG. Sorry, it's a lot of letters to get out at once. Um, we have our women and allies ERG, employee resource groups where we're supporting that uh, at TRI. But I think you know we see people out there in the world all trying to to push forward on this. And I think if we come out of these conferences and take those actions, that's how over time it's going to get better. So that's my personal thought. I love that last question. What are you looking forward to taking away from WT squared for inclusive innovators as the theme? Yeah. Well, being in a company doing innovation, I'm really curious to see uh, what's presented today. And I know that we've heard studies that talk about uh, women run companies and with women on boards that uh, profitability and innovation go up. So I think that the more inclusive we are, uh, the better all of our technology that comes out of the valley is going to be. Uh, so I'm looking forward to the uh, whatever thought leadership is here today that's different from, and each year that there's something different here that I learn. It's not the same thing. It was pipelines four years ago, right? Like this uh, last year, uh, it was a lot about women's leadership. So I'm really excited to see what comes out today. Well, Jennifer, I thank you so much for sharing some of your time on theCUBE with me today. And I think a lot of people are going to be able to learn a lot from you as thank well. You we appreciate much. your time. I appreciate time. your time. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. You. Lisa Martin on the ground with theCUBE. Thanks for watching.